The living room is such an important part of a home. It's where you relax, where you entertain, where you spend time with loved ones, where you kick your feet up at the end of a hard day. It's essential that the space not only functions well, but also makes you feel good. Today, we're gonna to take a look at some of our favorite tiny house living room design ideas. Over the years, we've seen a lot of different lounge ideas for tiny homes, and here are our top tips for making the space work for you. First up, the one thing that you should never compromise on in a lounge space is comfort. You need to be able to kick back and truly relax, and I love the idea of designing your whole lounge space around the couch. It doesn't matter how pretty your space is if it isn't comfortable. Lila and Ollie's home is a great example of prioritizing comfort and creating a space that just swallows you up. Immediately upon entering this house, we're in this incredibly comfortable lounge area. Yes, that was definitely yeah. one of our things that we wanted in this home. We spend a lot of time in the living area, and so for us it was important to have a really big couch area to relax and entertain our friends um, moving through into the kitchen space and absolutely love our big couch. We yeah. actually found the couch really early in our design, and we, we built the space around the couch and some people thought we were a bit crazy fitting mm. a massive couch like this in, but it's worked beautifully it's and we just really love well. it. Absolutely, and it's big enough as well that I'm guessing it can also double as a spare bed. Yeah, that was that was another reason behind the purchase, as you can fit two people on, on the sofa. Yeah, We've already had a friend come and stay the night and he was more than comfortable, so it works really well. If you live in a small home, chances are storage is always going to be at the forefront of your design considerations. The lounge is an excellent opportunity to add abundant storage space to your home with the help of built-in storage furniture. In Texas, Molly and Ken have done a brilliant job of building storage space into their tiny home. We did gain a lot of storage with this couch. So each cushion lifts up and has a storage compartment underneath it. So we tend to store our sheets here, any kind of off-season clothing that we're not wearing at the moment, whatever little nicks and knacks that we can't find a place for in the home, it goes under the couch. <laughs> and then also a really great thing are the ottomans. So each ottoman has its own storage. If we have friends over for a game night, we have all of our games stored in there. And then we also have additional guest bedding should they decide to crash on the couch. Built-in storage couches work incredibly well spatially, but they aren't always the most comfortable. In New South Wales, Jai has combined the function of storage under the couch with the comfort of a more conventional sofa. I love watching my TV and uh, editing on my laptop, so I really wanted to be able to have enough room to get comfortable. So it's really nice space for me to hang out and relax. And it's a really deep couch as well, so it does look extra comfortable. Yeah, it's beautiful. I went for a deep lounge so I could have space for all my clothes I really because I got a lot of clothes <laughs> as I do so I needed that space for all my clothes and bits and pieces that I couldn't fit anywhere else yeah because it looks like a custom-built couch for the space but this is modified from a store-bought one yes this is a store-bought lounge and we've modified and made up the bottom drawers it was wasted space if we didn't do it so yeah. we really needed to utilize everything so you just chopped the legs off it did you well, yeah, those screw on legs, just screwed them off, put the box under and happy days. It's a great way of doing it because you get the best of both worlds. You get the storage and you actually get a comfortable couch. Exactly. It's functional and looks beautiful. It's always nice to be able to comfortably accommodate guests, even in a small home. So the addition of a couch, which also transforms into a bed, is a great way of getting more function out of the living room. Amy and Greg's home in Queensland is a fantastic example of this. Comfort was the main goal with this, so we found that in our regular sized house we spent a lot of time in the lounge room on the couch watching movies, playing games with the kids, so we needed a couch that could accommodate all four of us and be comfortable. So we designed the layout actually of the lounge room based off the sizes of this couch. So um, the chase does double as storage, which is always important in your tiny house. Absolutely. And um, the bed obviously it pulls out from under there as well, which is great to have that extra sleeping space if you need it. We actually find that we spread that out more often than not yeah, to like to have out. more family time really. We spend more time with it out just hanging out like that rather than just in this L-shaped couch. Yeah, more formal seating. Mm. So we like to lays out, watch a movie, play our games. Yeah. In Jude's house truck, she's thought of another fantastic way of adding a guest bed to her lounge thanks to a clever pull-down contraption. 
there's an awful lot going on in this space because during the day yes it is my living room but at night it becomes my bedroom uh, in the morning it's my yoga room and when I have guests they go into this bed here so this here is actually a pull down bed then it is a pull down bed it's got a pulley system up here and it drops right down sits on top of here and what happens is this bed pulls out and this bed comes down and they go on top of each other like this feet the feet yeah yeah what a brilliant system having the two beds like that we had to figure out a way of getting uh, two sleeping spaces into a one level place you know normally in the tiny houses you've got the loft areas and and you know you could maybe put a couch down and that folds out to a bed but because i live in it and i don't want to have to make up a bed every day you know this was a, a happy medium so when we come up with this idea we also realized that there was a lot of space left under there because you know that whole area is raised but the bed only goes back so far so they made me these stairs which are just they're quite amazing because they come all the way to here and it's just way more storage heaps of storage in there the more multifunctional you can make a space the better marie has an especially small tiny home yet she has built an impressive amount of functionality into her lounge creating a small living space that truly does it all i wanted a gigantic bed but i also wanted a u-shaped couch so i tried to combine both of them and also having heaps of storage under it is really helpful so there is a mechanism that lifts the bed up and i can just hide things away under there <laughs> so is it simple for this to transform into a bed no it's not there is a few things to do like you have to take that table off and then there's a box that goes in the middle and obviously you have to redo your bed so it's not something you want to do too often but yeah because i Again, love, love options. I've got this table to work on if I want to. And I also have another table that I can unfold on my bed um, when it's made. That's such a good idea. Yes, it's, it's just nice to just choose in which corner of the house you're gonna work. And in Melbourne, architect Doug has built an incredible amount of functionality into his living room space by using a clever system of layering. So the dining room extends visually from what we see in the kitchen in a single gesture to the end of the space. And then what happens is all of that edge gets built in into a storage unit. And then thinking about the easiest way how to accommodate all of the living and sleeping uses in the space. The decision was the simplest way is to just build a platform. So something that has multiple affordances and can accommodate a lot of different uses. Uh, although it's just a single plane. So most of the time the bed sits on top and it's only really when I have guests that I make the space look presentable and the bed slides underneath and then that's this clear space for people to sit on top. I find usually that people are like water. People are more adaptable than objects. So what happens usually is people just find the space where they can. It's great to be able to relax and enjoy a movie or binge watch your favorite TV show. But televisions take up a lot of space and don't always look great. To save on space and also to maximize your viewing experience, we love the idea of adding a projector and screen to your living room. Mitch and Taj have brilliantly built a projector into their tiny home, perfect for those family movie nights. And I spy this hatch in the ceiling over here. What's going on there? That is our projector. <laughs> cool. So this was another big part of our design was to make sure that we can pull the blind down of our door and then shoot a projector from underneath this landing and sofa bed comes out and we can all lie down there and watch movies together. And back in Texas, Molly and Ken's home is another great example of how a projector can be added. We do hook up a projector screen through these hooks mm -hmm. and this will pull down. Right, and it's like a 70 inch TV, so it takes up the entire width of the house, but oh man, it's awesome for game nights. Yeah, so we make sure we get all the drinks, all the snacks here, so we don't have to keep going underneath and mm -hmm. getting all that stuff. And speaking of that, if we do have friends over for a game night or whatever it may be, or dinner, we have uh, dinner trays behind the couch that we pull out. So that way two people can sit on the ottoman, two people on the couch and we can have dinner together, drinks, whatever it may be. But if it's just Ken and I, we use our ottomans as our table. Yep. <laughs> right. A very clear way of adding invisible square footage to your tiny home, adding more function to the space while still keeping the design open, is to incorporate a loft net. This increases the usable living space, adding a comfortable area to lie back and relax, while also allowing the room to still feel open and unobstructed. 
How cool is it having this hammock in this space too? That's so neat. Yeah, um, being one of the smaller builds that the builder does, it was important to kind of try to add space where you otherwise wouldn't have space, but it gives you a second area to hang out in. Yeah, I really like that. Do you use the space much? I do a little bit, and when I'm not, it's really good for things like blankets and pillows. Very um, nice. It's actually got its own little light up there as well, which is great for reading. In any place you live, you have to create space for the things that you love and just make you feel good. In Rosie's container home, she's dedicated a huge portion of her living space to create an amazing home library. I've always wanted a floor to ceiling library. There's probably two decades of op shopping and book sales <laughs> gone into the library and I'm, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. Wow, and look at how organized you are as well. Yeah, it's one of the few areas of my life I'm actually organized in, <laughs> is my library, calling it the Rosie classification system because it's, <laughs> it makes sense to me. So I know where to find all my, all my study books and um, just a whole array of nonfiction and good sci-fi as well. I am very impressed. And then you've got this lovely chair here as well as the perfect little reading nook. It is, it's just curling up on the chair in winter with the fire on and a glass of wine on one of the library shelves. It's a really hard life, yeah. It must be yeah. indeed. <laughs> Another great example of this is in Christine's beautiful forest tiny home where she's even added a piano. I did a little bit of a Google when I was and I thought, do people have pianos in a tiny home? And um, I didn't find much in the way at all. So I thought, well, let's do a design around the piano and make sure that we have a piano in here. Um, and I love it. I love being able to play and have the doors open. And, yeah. So I'm guessing you're a passionate musician? Well, it's one of my projects. I did, I played as a, as a youngster and it's one of the things as a challenge I want to work my way through and you know, all the grades um, in classical music. It takes a little bit more when you're an adult, it's a little harder, but I, you know, it's for me and I just want as I get older to be able to just play beautifully. Nothing helps you relax more than looking out onto a great view. And if you're lucky enough to be in a spot where you have amazing views, one great option is to elevate your lounge space to help you capitalize on them. Kevin's tiny home overlooks an incredible surf beach and everything about his lounge loft is designed to help you soak in the amazing vista. To me, it's like a picture. It's changing every second and that keeps you occupied what's out there. And the way that you've done this is really clever as well because you've got a perfectly comfortable space to sleep, but it's so nice having that big, open space which has been turned into quite a luxurious looking lounge. Yes it is. It, it, another one was not to box it off so to separate the room so that's why the wires are there for protection if you did happen to lose your balance and fall down that's protecting it but it's also made the whole ambience all airy and opened up. I had to juggle the bed and the mezzanine floor and get enough headroom on both of them that was part of the design process. Lifting a lounge up into a loft space can also add a real sense of coziness, just like in Casey's tiny home. I had a, such a blast kind of getting a rug and getting the blankets. I wanted to make it quite a comfortable, cozy kind of space, especially because downstairs that's kind of like the vintage armchairs. Up here I wanted to be able to have a nap, watch TV, have a sleep, that kind of thing. So that was really the goal with this big, it's a pull-out couch as well, so I've got friends that come and stay. I need to have more than one place to sleep. It's a, it's a must, even in a tiny house, so it's worked out really well. Like a cat, you've got to be able to follow the sun. Exactly, the sun comes in here, comes in here, I need to have all the spots. <laughs> and you do have lovely views out here as well. Yeah, especially laying down, that's what I've found. It's just really nice being up here, feeling a bit high, you can see everything around you. Beyond the function of a living room, it's important that the space makes you feel good. Think of ways that you can add pure beauty to your lounge. One of my favorite examples of this is Shay's beautiful tiny home where she's added an incredible green wall to add life and vibrance to her living space. Look at that green wall! Thank you! <laughs> I'm such a fan of plants inside the house and that just creates such a stunning feature in the home, doesn't it? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love it. It's kind of like that wall was always going to be for an artwork of some sort and I thought well what better artwork than what nature has provided us with so that's why it became my plant wall. There's nothing like living art is there? Yeah. <laughs> of all the rooms in your tiny home it's likely that you'll spend the most time in your lounge. In Rebecca's tiny home she's really opened up the living space by making it double height. In addition to this she's further accentuated the sense of spaciousness through clever use of windows, mirrors and interior decorating. 
I spent a lot of time drawing this up in CAD and rendering the spaces and really understanding what it's going to feel like. So yeah, I kind of knew it before it was built. I knew how it was going to feel and it, it felt right. Yeah, as you say, you've got the double height in this part of the home, but you've also got all of these windows that extend right up to the ceiling. And where there aren't windows, you've got the mirrors, which is such a nice touch. Yeah, making the most of the light was really important to me. So I love mirrors, not because I love myself. I just love what they do to a space. And the styling in this home is so beautiful as well. You've got these big flowing curtains and all of the white and the touches of gold and pink. It's just such a lovely space to walk into. Thank you. Spaces have always have had a real effect on me. Like they can make me feel desperate and sad or they can make me feel uplifted and really happy and joyful. That's exactly what I needed it to do for yeah. me. So yeah, I'm very happy and I'm, I look forward to coming home whenever I'm out and yeah. One of my favorite tips for small homes, if possible, is to extend your living space into the outdoors. Fabian has designed his home around entertaining and his lounge has been brilliantly designed to make sure there's abundant room for guests. But he's also expertly expanded his living room into the outdoors in order to create even more abundant space. Definitely the indoor outdoor flow was a very, very big part of this design. I do have uh, two kitchens in a tiny house. I have, of course, the interior one, and this one is the one outside, which I can orientate to in a way where I can face the guests I can cook very aromatic food. <laughs> Always <laughs> problematic in a tiny house. Yes, and I'm, I'm, I'm Asian, I own that, and I'm, uh, I'm very much uh, inspired by strong flavors. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the ventilator is not quite so powerful enough, so much better to do it outside. One of the things that I like about this outdoor space that you've created as well is that you can completely enclose it. You've got the cafe blinds and then you've also got the curtains to block out the sun when it gets too harsh. Yes, and that really creates a different vibe in here. So on a rainy day, I might pull down the blinds and watch the rain trickle down. But at night, sometimes I might want to pull the blinds and cozy up the space and close it off a little bit and just contain some of the corners and create different feelings of space. Another fabulous example of this is in New South Wales, where Anthony and Kira have added a stunning outdoor living area overlooking the rainforest and their centropic gardens. I've been following tiny homes and looking at them, and some of the verandas I've seen are like that big sort of thing. I thought, oh, I want a massive veranda to be able to sleep on and live on and cook on and do all the different things, you know? So that was a big thing, and I think you kind of uh, were yeah, quite same. aligned in that. Any house that I've lived in, if there's a veranda, that's where I'd spend all my time. It was a no-brainer to really focus on having the deck and it's so livable. All things considered, there is one master design tip that I hold above all others. And it happens to come from the Stoics. And that is, know thyself. Be honest with yourself about who you are and how you use the space. And as long as you design in accordance with that, you can't go wrong. We hope you've got some valuable insights in this video and we wanna thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.